Reggie Eleki has been emergency quick ban from competitive Pokemon and here is why. We will begin this explanation with a famous quote. It's not about how you start but how you finish and our boy Eleki is the best example for it. Whenever we think about the Reggie group, the first thing that comes in our mind is useless blockheads which have very less competitive usage. And why would not it be? Monotype Pokemon with garbage-like stats and move pool is never going to have S ranked in competitive Pokemon. And then there is the leader Regigigas, who is considered as one of the worst Pokemon of all time competitively, if not the worst. Regardless, the Regigroup group collectively has never been able to impress us, except for maybe in the anime where they have made some cool cameo appearances. Competitively, none of the Regis have ever made it to the OU tier in modern recent generations and had to satisfy their spot in the lower tiers. However, Generation 8 was where people thought that the Reggie group is going to make Pokemon great again. Two new Reggie forms were introduced known as Reggie Drago and Reggie Eleki. And trust me, in the early days of Gen 8, it was the talk in the town. Some experts predicted that Reggie Eleki is going to be the next god of Pokemon with god-like stats. Let's keep Regidrago aside for a later video and see the success story of Regi Eleki. As soon as this Pokemon was released, it took the title from Deoxys Speed of being the fastest Pokemon of all time. Yup, Regi Eleki kinda lived up to its hype in that place. Eleki was kind of a glass cannon. It packed decent offensive stats having a speed stat of base 200 and its offensive stats locked at a base 100 on each attack and special attack, meaning that this Pokemon could either go physical or special or even mixed if it wanted to. However, as I said, this Pokemon was a glass cannon with its defenses being locked at their base 50 and a petty HP being locked at 80. However, the biggest X factor of this Pokemon was its ability. Reggie Eleki got a signature ability being Transistor, meaning that whenever this Pokemon goes for an electric move, its offensive stats are multiplied by 1.5. To make it easy for you, electric moves coming out from Eleki is most likely going to one hit your Pokemon which doesn't resist or immune to the electric type. In fact, Reggie Eleki's electric moves are so strong that an average electric move like Thunderbolt can one shot Clefable if Reggie Eleki is holding a choice specs. Due to its amazing potential and the fact that it has so strong and hits super hard, Reggie Eleki was an amazing Pokemon in the UU tier. Oh wait. Did I say UU tier? Um, yeah, regarding that. Well, you see, the OU tier is ruled by a Pokemon called Landorus Therian, which is like on almost every team. Reggie Eleki was having a very hard time countering Lando, as it would always come in on Eleki on every occasion and completely shut down Reggie Eleki. The best thing Reggie Eleki could do is hit it with an ancient power, chipping Lando down for a mere 8% damage. Yup, that's right, ancient power. Well, you see, despite having a great ability and good offensive stats, Game Freak decided to heavily cripple Eleki. They did this by limiting Reggie Eleki's move coverage to electric only. Eleki got a few other moves like ancient power and swift. Well, it's better to not click a move than clicking swift, as those moves would do no form of damage whatsoever. Neither did Reggie Eleki get an ice type move, nor it got a grass move which would hit ground type Pokemon. Also, Garchomp usage was on the rise, which completely walled Reggie Eleki. It could do nothing versus a Sigma ground type Pokemon except switch out in vain. Players tried a lot of tricks and stuff to make Reggie Eleki work in the OU tier versus ground types by making tricky synergies like Ring Target trick Klefki, whose main job was to trick Landorus Therian a Ring Target as Klefki is a big prey for Landorus T and would always come in on Klefki to sponge a Thunder Wave and kill it back with an Earthquake. Having the ability Prankster, it would go first before Landorus could go for an Earthquake and trick it running target. Then Landorus would no longer be immune to electric type and would eventually end up getting destroyed by Reggie Eleki because having a secondary flying type, Eleki could even kill Landorus T with Thundershock. This strategy worked early stages of the meta till it became widespread and people came to know about this strat. They would no longer bring in a Landorus directly on Klefki and would always scout for the triggering target. Gradually, this strategy fell big time and Eleki's ways of getting past Landers T was shut down. Mid-season, a very deadly combination came into picture known as Zack Eleki. Basically, to summarize it up, 
Reji Eleki was a big bet to Landresti, which 99% of the time came into Sponge Eleki. Players would predict this incoming Landres switch and hard double to Gallery and Zabdos. Now, Zabdos has the ability defined. The intimidate from Landresti, instead of dropping its attack to minus 1, gave it a 1.5x boost. And let's not forget that Gallery and Zabdos has one of the highest physical offensive stats and moves. This defined boost, which it got from Intimidate Landris, would guarantee at least 1 to 2 kills for Gallery and Zabdos. This combination was extremely deadly and was used in a few big tournaments as well. However, this strategy also eventually faded out as players started drifting an incoming Zabdos Galarian and would not fall in the trap anymore. To sum it all up, the strategy worked out but it's never dependable and eventually the strategy faded out in the wilderness. Being such a strong hitter with an excellent ability, OU was not kind to Reggie Eleki and it transformed the offensive Eleki into a mere dual screen setter as Eleki was the fastest Pokemon and it got both light screen and reflect. It could also explode after getting a dual screen, setting up for a potential sweep by the next incoming Pokemon. But this did not help Reggie Eleki at all as the screen setting tennis ball was limited to hyper offense teams only. I know, OU can be really tough and it really was tough for Eleki. The OU tier was a complete roller coaster for Eleki as it dropped to U for a while, then again from UU it draws back to OU as it was deemed too broken in the U tier, then again the OU tier was too much for Reggie Eleki and finally the UU tier was considered the best spot for Reggie Eleki. Yes, a very tricky and controversial Pokemon. Although this Pokemon was dropped in the UU tier, it still left a huge impact in the OU tier. Basically, an OU team, regardless of anything, was forced to run a ground type Pokemon. Else, if a player is matchup fishing with a Regieleki, it's going to be an insta loss for you every time Regieleki comes in. It's either going to get a kill or do massive damage with those powerful Volt switches. So now, you also know why running ground type Pokemon are very important, else you straight up lose to Volt and Course. Now let's move to Generation 9, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is all where it changed for Reggie Eleki. The sad soul which was weeping in the Gen 8 EU tier decided, enough is enough. I am going to show Landris T who the real deal is. Well, I say the quote again. It's not about how you start, but how you finish. And Reggie Eleki was on its melting point. In Generation 9, Reggie Eleki did not get buffed much, however, it now had access to the new feature called Terrestrialization and also a new move called Terra Blast. Now, this move changed everything for Eleki. It made Eleki from a Toyota to a Tesla. Reggie Eleki would now Terrestrialize into an Ice type and pack that Ice Tap Terra Blast. Landorus coming into block Volt Switch from an Eleki would get its ass blasted to Mars from a 4 weeks Ice Terra Blast. It was completely checkmate for Landorus T as if Landris T testalized into something like a steel type to resist Terra Ice Blast, Reggie Eleki would just click Volt Switch and turn the tables. And let's not forget, this Volt Switch stab is boosted by Transistor. So even if Landris T testalized into steel type, it would get heavily chipped down and also might get one hit killed by a stab Transistor boosted Thunderbolt. Dragapult, being a dragon type and having a very high base speed, would serve the same fate. Even it could not come in on Reggie Eleki to hit the electric move as Reggie Eleki was loads faster than Dragapult and would send it straight home with a stab ice terra blast. The same thing was applicable to all dragons and grounds as both shared that common ice weakness and nothing could take a terra ice blast from Eleki. Speed up Clotzer came into picture to check Eleki but people forgot that Reggie Eleki has strong offenses both physically and specially and terra blast can be physical or special depending on the greater offensive stat. So Eleki would switch from special to physical and a physical Terra Ice Blast would send Clotzer out of commission. The choice pack sets had become extremely popular just the first day when home was released and people were just losing to it. Then it pretty much ran out of options as they say, if you can't beat him, join him. So Reggie Eleki was pretty much on every team. Eventually, although a ban on Eleki was not planned, however, things got too far and the OU Council after a long time in Pokemon history, had to start an emergency ban. And thus my friends, just in one day only, the Gen 8 EU Pokemon Reggie Eleki got insta ban to straight in the Uber sphere in Gen 9. This is a very proud moment for both the agency and the industry as our boy has finally made it to the Uber sphere and that also in some fashion. 
Let me know in the comments who is going to eat the bad hammer next. And as usual, if you like all these kinds of videos and my variety of Pokemon content, make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the videos as it helps me out a lot. And also, we are on the road to 10k. So let's get that goal. And I will catch all of you guys in the next video. So stay safe, take care and Reggie Alecky.